Welcome, family of God, to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. Get ready to dive deep into God's holy word as we discover his gems and jewels, where the Bible tells us it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search it out, as we see how God declares the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done, saying his counsel shall stand and he will do all of his good pleasure. The Holy Spirit has a treat for us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Isaiah chapter four, verse one. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, hey, Shabbat Shalom, hey, Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, hey, Shabbat Shalom, hey, Shabbat, 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 Shalom. We thank you, Lord, for this Shabbat. Thank you for sanctifying and setting apart the seventh day, a day of rest, where you declared that you made the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. And you gave the Sabbath that creation before the law of Moses was ever given. And you have invited us to rest in you, hallelujah, on this day that you have set apart, which is a shadow of the rest to come. For there remains a rest for the children of God. And we know that that rest is going to be in the kingdom of God forever and ever, beginning on the seventh day. Hallelujah. The millennial reign of Jesus Christ, which starts for the first fruits when we are raptured to your house. Hallelujah. In order to be married to our King. Oh Lord, how we look forward to that day. We look forward to that day when you descend upon the clouds and when you stand upon the wall and when you pass by in your chariot. Hallelujah. And we can't wait for us, those who are in you, to be called up to come up here as we meet you in the air, assembled in the clouds to be brought before the Ancient of Days as we see the Lamb standing and taking the seven sealed scroll and opening it. And therefore we will sing the new song, the song of the redeemed, because you are worthy, O Lord, to take the scroll and to open it, because you have given us the victory. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory is mine today. I told Satan, get thee behind, victory today is mine. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as we sing psalms and we praise your holy and righteous name and we lift you up on high. 
because you are worthy of all praise. Lord, here we are. Here we are at the table, ready to dig in for this Shabbat meal, to see what it is that you have in store for us to eat, because we desire the honeycomb. Hallelujah. We desire the honey. We desire the richness of your word. We are Bereans going to and fro through the scriptures because knowledge is increasing to see if these things are so. And we know that you are the immutable God. You do not change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And your years are without end. For you had no beginning. You will never have an end. You are the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And we bow our knees and worship. Hallelujah. And we say, worthy is the Lamb. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, Lord, for given us eternal life and forgiveness of sins and having our names recorded in the Lamb's book of life. We thank you, Lord, for the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to go from glory to glory as we study to show ourselves approved, the workman and workwoman who need not be ashamed because you, O Holy Spirit, rightly divide the word of truth through these earthen vessels of clay as we decrease so that you could increase, so that you can teach us great and mighty things which we do not know and open up our eyes so that we can behold wondrous things out of your word. Abba, Father, we cry out to you and we thank you, Lord, for hearing our cries. May the fullness of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, dwell in us richly, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of yod heh vav -Heh, and the spirit of yod heh vav -Heh as we are in you and you are in us so that we can bear much fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, hallelujah, self-control and kindness. So against such, there is no law. And so we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to enter in, hallelujah, allowing us to draw near, allowing us, to study your word for there have been many saints of old who have desired to look into the things that you are revealing unto us this final generation and they have not seen it but for this final generation that you have ordained to be on your earth here in 2023 the scriptures are being opened like never before and so we thank you lord for the engrafted word which is able to save our soul may we take what you give to us today freely and may we freely give it back out because you are going to fill us up and you're going to send us out so that we can pour it out may we always be bold as a lion hallelujah and may we never flee when no one pursues because there's nothing to fear except you O lord for the fear of the lord is our treasure O lord how we love you and we thank you and we magnify your name in the matchless, self-sacrificing name, the name that is above all names, Jesus the Messiah, we pray and ask it all, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Well, hallelujah, saints of God. It's so great to be back with another teaching installment of when the temple in heaven is open. Everything will change. And I wanted to do a Shabbat teaching today. Hallelujah. Today is Friday, September 29th, and it is 8.08 .08 p.m. here where I'm at. And so... It's the Shabbat, hallelujah, because God's days begin at evening to the morning. The evening and the morning were the first day, and so and so and so and so, hallelujah. And so I wanted to take a little pause from the Psalm 83 study because I saw something recently that I want to bring out through the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's such a beautiful picture. It's such a beautiful picture, hence why I titled this video, What Saith the Scripture? Why the third day? Hallelujah. What said the scripture? Why the third day? And this is so beautiful. We're going to see some interesting things about the third day. Because the third day talks about our redemption. Hallelujah. The third day talks about our redemption. And I want to highlight some interesting passages in, passages in the Bible, which again, confirm that there will be a pre-tribulation rapture 
which will take place on the third day. And we will be safe inside the Father's house on the third day from all the judgment that is coming down upon everybody who has been left behind. And that's why I started off with Isaiah chapter 4, because this is going to be pivotal as we put all the puzzle pieces together, because we're going to come back to Isaiah chapter 4, because I want to show you something real, 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 real interesting about Isaiah chapter 4 and how this all ties to the third day. So before we break down Isaiah chapter 4, let's first talk about the third day, right? And so I want to begin in Genesis, right? Because that's the first place where we find the third day. And of course, we're going to see the end from the beginning, right? So here, the Bible tells us what happened on the third day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 9. Help us, Holy Spirit. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. And this is just so rich. Hallelujah. This is so rich, because not only do we find out what God did on the third day of creation, but we see the details of what happened on the third day of creation. Not only did God, not only did God on the third day, hallelujah, gather all the seas together unto one place, not only did God on the third day cause the dry land to appear, and he called it earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and he said that it was good, but God also brought forth the grass and the herb yielding seed and all the trees hallelujah and this is the whole this is the whole point the trees were brought forth on the third day and not just trees god said fruit trees and this is the first time that we come across the word fruit right hallelujah this is the first time that we come across the word fruit hallelujah fruit in the bible first time we come across fruit genesis chapter 1 verse 11 genesis chapter 1 verse 12 okay the first time that we come across fruit third day the first time that we come across tree third day <laughs> and so on the third day god made all the trees of the earth appear and all the trees of the earth produce fruit hallelujah <laughs> and god said that it was good amen and so this is exactly what's going to tie in the third day to the time when Jesus Christ appears, hallelujah. Because at the time when Jesus Christ appears, he's going to see if you have fruit, hallelujah. He's going to see who has fruit and who doesn't have fruit. Because on the third day, hallelujah, according to Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, you know this. I'll begin at verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight so on the third day god is going to raise us up and so the third day is upon us hallelujah the day and the hour i personally do not know but i know that the time and the season is the third day the third day is upon us and god says on the third day he's going to raise us up because it's been two days right one day with the lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day what's today 2023 so it's been 2000 years since jesus has been on earth right it's been 2000 years since jesus has been on this earth right for the last 2000 years hallelujah for the last 2000 years we've been in the second day hallelujah we've been in the second day for the last 2000 years it's been two days one day thousand years one day thousand years 2023 two days so the third day god says he will raise us up so on the third day when god raises us up everybody who's found in him the bible tells us that we have to have fruit on this day right 
The Bible says that we have to have fruit on this day. The Bible tells us that in the Gospels, right? This is what the prophet told us. Amen. This is what the prophet, the forerunner told us, right? The prophet John the Baptist, the one that Jesus said would come. Hallelujah. The one that he promised in Malachi who would come. He came in the spirit of Elijah. And Jesus Christ said that John the Baptist was the fulfillment of that prophecy. But you have to have ears to hear. You have to uh, want to receive it. You have to be humble in order to receive it. And John the Baptist fulfilled the Malachi prophecy. And what did John the Baptist tell us? John the Baptist told us in Matthew chapter 3. Hallelujah. I'll begin at verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Hallelujah. So fruit bearing involves repentance, right? Because we can't bear fruit unless we do what first? Repent, right? Because the Bible tells us that we have to change our mind, which is what the word repent means, metanoia to change your mind and you change your mind when you finally realize that you're a sinner, right? When I finally realized that I was a sinner in 2006, my mind changed. And because my mind changed and I acknowledged my sin, I acknowledged my transgressions, I acknowledged my iniquity, I finally realized that I fell short of the glory of God and then I cried out, right? Because now that I had a change of mind, I could receive the change of heart, which was the heart transplant, which is what being born again is, right? God takes away the stony heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead and his word is like a fire shut up in our bones because his word is a hammer that breaks the rock, hallelujah. His word is a hammer that breaks that stony heart, right? The word of God comes into us through uh, the person of the Holy Spirit and he gives us a heart of flesh and he seals us with himself, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And therefore, we are now born again and then we can bear fruit. Hallelujah. And so John the Baptist is describing the process. Verse eight, Matthew chapter three, bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Change your mind. Come into agreement with God. Admit that you have sinned against him, that we have broken his commandments. And that we have no one else to save us except the one who came to save us, Jesus Christ. Verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Verse 10. Here goes the crux. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Hallelujah. God says that there's going to come a day of inspection. Mm. God says that there's going to come a day of inspection when he passes by, right? The day of inspection is when he takes out the plumb line, right? This is what Amos tells us. When God stands upon a wall with a plumb line in his hand, and the Bible says that that plumb line in his hand is righteousness. He's going to lay the plummet right? He's going to lay the plumb line out on the day when he descends, when he stands, and when he passes by. And the plumb line is going to be righteousness. And his righteousness is the only righteousness that's going to count on that day because that is the only fruit that's going to remain, right? The only fruit that's going to remain are those who bore fruit by faith in his name. Hallelujah. And so everybody who's with him on that day, because he's in us and we're in him, Everybody who's in him on that day, hallelujah, when God seeks fruit, when he comes to inspect, we're going to be taken out of here because God says the palm trees are going to be separated. Hazazan Tamar, hallelujah. All the palm trees are going to be separated. And that's why the great multitude, when we appear in heaven all at once, right after the 144,000, because we all go in together. But the 144,000 go in first because salvation is of the Jew, right? To the Jew first and then also to the Greek, okay? The, the order doesn't change. <laughs> God don't change. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the table of showbread goes in first, just like the tabernacle model, 
Hallelujah. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Amen. The same pattern that you see in the prophets. Ezekiel, we just talked about that in the last teaching on Psalm 83, part 5. When the 144,000 are sealed on their forehead, hallelujah, with the seal of God. Same pattern you see in Revelation chapter 7, the 144,000 are sealed first. Amen. Raptured. Table of showbread. Then the great multitude appears because the table of showbread is put into the tabernacle at the same time as the menorah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that the menorah has seven candlesticks, right? And there's a central branch, a central stem, a central vine from which three branches come out on the right side of it and three branches come out on the left side of the central branch. And there are seven stems all together. The Bible tells us that there are seven spirits of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of yod heh vav -Heh, and the spirit of yod heh vav -Heh. You can find that in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. And the Bible says that there are seven churches, hallelujah. And the seven churches are filled with the seven spirits of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in order for the menorah uh, to have light, it has to have oil, right? It has to be lit with olive oil. And what's the oil? The oil is the Holy Spirit, of course, because the Holy Spirit is the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. And so he has to be in us through the new birth. Amen. And so on the day, hallelujah, when God sets up his tabernacle in heaven, he's looking for fruit, right? Because the very menorah represents a tree. I just want to read this little article real fast. There's a couple of excerpts. This is from Jerusalem Post. I just brought this out real fast. The tree and the menorah. The menorah was not just a candelabrum. It symbolized the covenant between God and the Jewish people. There it goes. There goes the menorah. There goes uh, the menorah. And then here we see uh, right down here. I just want to show this to you. Amen. Uh, as Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch writes in his commentary on Parashat Terumah, made completely of gold, it symbolizes precisely that unchanging firmness and timelessness, which, as indicated by its form, is to blossom and develop in the sanctuary of God through the spirit of God's law, to put awareness into practice by doing good. Goodness and truth are eternal and immutable, resembling a tree, the menorah, symbolized awareness of God, hallelujah. Resembling a tree, the menorah symbolized awareness to God, hallelujah. And so here we see that even the Jews understand that the menorah resembles a tree, right? And so the very tree, which is the menorah, on it there was artistic artwork placed upon it of flower buds, right? On the stems. So the very menorah represents a tree. Amen. Jesus Christ tells us in Matthew chapter 7 something interesting again about the trees. Hallelujah. This is all going back to the third day. We're going to build this precept. Matthew chapter 7. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 tells us this a tree and its fruits. Amen. A tree and its fruits. Uh, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. This is the first thing that God told us to be aware about in Matthew 24, right? The first thing he told us about the sign of his coming, right, about the end of the age is to be not deceived. For many will come in his name saying, I am the Christ. So here we see the same thing in Matthew chapter 7. Beware of false prophets, be not deceived which come to you in sheep's clothing, Charles Taze Russell, hmm. the founder of the Watchtower Society, a.k.a. Jehovah Witnesses, Joseph Smith, hmm. the founder of the Church of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormons. <laughs> Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, right? Uh, many in the Catholic Church, <laughs> right? They've had a long history. Right, from selling indulgences, okay, in order to <laughs> get people out of purgatory, which there's no such thing, right, by uh, giving money uh, to enrich uh, these wolves in sheep's clothing, right, on to praying to saints and praying to the Virgin Mary, breaking the first commandment by putting somebody else 
in the place of God when God said that there's only one mediator between us and him, which is the God man, Jesus Christ. God says, beware of false prophets. Muhammad, mm, who came 600 years approximately after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, talking about he received a revelation in a cave from some type of angel, which of course was Satan. And he gave uh, the Quran, okay, to Muhammad and told him that the Bible must be changed because the promise goes through Ishmael, not Isaac. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Verse 16, you shall know them by their fruits. Hallelujah. We know these people by their fruits, right? We know these people by their fruits. They promise liberty, but what do they do? They continue to shackle people in bondage, right? They promise liberty, right? Muhammad said, follow him. And what does he tell his followers to do? Commit jihad, right? Against all infidels, kill in the name of Allah. Does that sound like the first fruit of the spirit, which is love? <laughs> God says those who take the sword will perish by the sword, okay? What is, uh, what does Muhammad say? He says he promises liberty, right? But he, he's really uh, bringing people into bondage. He says, hey, bow down and face Mecca five times a day. That's going to cut it, Muhammad? No, it's not. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it, Muhammad. I'm not going to face towards no black box, no black cube, and bow down five times a day. That's not going to cut it. Where, well, where, where's the blood? Mm. Where's the blood, Muhammad? Right. God told me, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Jehovah Witnesses, they want to knock on your door and go door to door. Right. They want to they want to promise liberty, but they want to bring you into bondage. Right. By denying the Lord who brought them. And they say, you know what? Jesus Christ, he ain't God. And so because we're going to teach you this lie, you got to shelter yourself inside the kingdom hall and don't associate with anybody else who doesn't subscribe to the watchtower society teachings right same thing with mormons right the same thing that joseph smith said right the same thing uh, that mormons uh declared that jesus christ uh, had a beginning right he's the spirit brother of satan can you imagine these people ye shall know them by their fruits okay there's no love there god is love and if you don't believe that jesus christ is god well, the love of God ain't in you. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, right? This is what happened on the third day. These were all good trees. God said he saw everything on the third day, and it was good. So all the trees were bearing fruit. This was before the curse, right? Before the curse, all the trees that God made to appear on the third day, they bore fruit, right? On the third day, all the trees were bearing fruit, and God said it was good. Hallelujah. So what's God going to do on the day when he comes on the third day to revive us, right, to raise us up, right? God says a good tree, hallelujah, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Okay, this is the day of inspection, right? This is the day of inspection. Hallelujah. This is the day when God finds out the hypocrites. This is how Matthew 7 actually begins, right? This is how Matthew chapter 7 actually begins, verse 5. You hypocrite, right? Verse 5, you hypocrite. So God has a work to do to find out all the hypocrites on the day when he inspects everybody's tree hallelujah on the day when he inspects to see what type of tree you are and if there's fruit okay god says unless we abide in him and he abides in us uh there's going to be no fruit we have to abide in him and he has to abide in us so that we can bear much fruit hallelujah he is the vine we are the branches amen and so we have to be in him and he has to be in us so that we can bear much fruit but if you're not in Christ, right, the God man, right, if you're not in Christ, Emmanuel, that being interpreted as God with us, if you're not in Christ, the one who died on the cross and rose from the dead, 
if you're not in Christ, right, the one who is from of everlasting, whose goings are from of old, the one who is to be king in Israel, according to the prophet Micah, if you're not in Christ, the one born of a virgin, hallelujah, if you're not in Christ, there's going to be no fruit. There's going to be no fruit that remains. There's going to be no fruit on the day when God looks to see what's on your branch. Ooh -wee. Mm. There's going to be no fruit on the day when God comes to see what's on your branch. Remember, he's standing upon a wall with a plumb line in his hand. Hallelujah. And the Bible says when he stands upon a wall with a plumb line in his hand, <laughs> the son of man is going to appear in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks meaning he is going to be in the midst because he is the central stem, right, of the menorah, right? He's divine, we're the branches. He's going to appear in the midst, hallelujah, of the menorah. So unless we are part of the menorah, amen, found in him not having our own righteousness on that day, right? But the righteousness only comes by faith in his name, there's going to be no fruit on your branch. Right? And what does God say? God says, verse 19, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Verse 21, here it goes. This is when all the hypocrites are found out, right? Because on this day of the inspection, right? On the third day, <laughs> when God is looking for all the trees, Right. He's, he's coming to inspect all the trees. Where's the fruit at? Right. Where's the fruit at? He wants to see something good. Amen. On the third day, he saw that the trees that bore fruit, it was good. So he's looking, he's looking, <laughs> he's looking for a tree that's going to bear fruit so he can say that's good. And the only tree that's going to bear fruit <laughs> on that day are those who have been in him and he in us being born again by faith in his name. We're the only ones who are going to bear fruit, the fruit of the spirit. Right. The Bible says on that day when all the wolves and sheep's clothing are found out, mm, on that day when God uncovers lots of skirts, right? On that day when God sees the nakedness of everybody left behind, God says, for those who were appointed to destruction, one fourth of all the earth, pale horse. Here goes some of them on the last day, right? Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work in iniquity. Ooh-wee. Right? On the day when God found out all the hypocrites, right? On the day when the rapture takes place, one taken, the other one left. And that one that was left was swallowed up by the pale horse. There they go on the last day, talking about, I did this and I did that. Talking about, I did this, that, and the third, except believe on the one whom God has sent, right? They're trying to uh, present their own works, right? I, but I prophesied in your name, <laughs> I cast out devils in your name. I did many wonderful works. Oh, well, the Bible tells us that we are saved by grace through faith, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. We are saved by grace through faith, right? Not of works. It is the gift of God, lest anyone should boast, right? There you go boasting on the last day, fulfilling the scriptures. You boasting, Lord, Lord. I prophesied in your name. I'm boasting. And in your name, I cast out devils. I'm boasting. In your name, I did many wonderful works. I'm boasting. Well, of course, these false prophets who were clothed in sheep's clothing, but were inwardly ravening wolves, on the last day, their true character is again revealed. Mm. They didn't hold to the promises of God, right? They didn't stand upon the solid foundation, right? Which is the rock, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Hallelujah. And that's all the good trees. That's all those who are found in Christ. 
on the cloudy and dark day. Verse 26. Here goes everybody else left behind. They built their house upon the sand. The house is us, right? We're the house, right? We are the temple of the Lord, right? We are the house. And so what's going to happen? If you're trusting in Muhammad, if you're trusting and praying to the Virgin Mary, if you're trusting in Hare Krishna, if you're trusting in Hinduism, if you're trusting in Buddha, right? If you're trusting in the Watchtower Society, if you're trusting in uh, Christian science, if you're trusting in the Church of Latter-day Saints, right? If you're trusting in Charles Darwin, if you're trusting in Aleister Crowley, right? Whatever you're trusting in, Taoism, whatever you're trusting in, tarot cards, whatever you're trusting in, horoscopes, whatever you're trusting in, Miss Cleo, call me now. Okay, well, call her up on this day. Okay, you better call Miss Cleo on this day. I bet you get a, a busy sound. Ooh -wee. Mm. Where she at? Where, where, where Miss Cleo at? On the cloudy and dark day. You wanted to call her up, right? You wanted to call the psychic hotline. Mm. Call me now, Miss Cleo. Where she at? On the cloudy and dark day. Where she at? You better call her up. Mm. Better call her Baphomet. Where, where, where Baphomet at to save you on this day? Verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine. Where the Watchtower Society on this day? Where that? Where, where them propaganda stands you had on every corner? Where they at? Well, you better you better consult you better consult your mediums on the cloudy and dark day where they at and every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it left behind mm. one fourth of all those who are left behind well they got a hard lesson of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, culminating in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, right? Off to the lake of fire, no escape. Oh, what a tragedy. Mm. What a tragedy. But let's keep on going, amen. We're just getting started, hallelujah. I pray that you're being blessed thus far because I'm not done with the third day. Right. Because this third day, this theme is woven throughout the scripture. So I want to go to another Old Testament example of the third day. Right. The third day we see in Exodus chapter 19 when God says we have to be ready. Right. When God says we have to be ready for the third day, God does not change. Hallelujah. When God appeared to the children of Israel on Mount Sinai, he told Moses to tell the people to be ready on the third day. God told Moses that there was going to be a, be a prophet who was going to arise just like him. To him, the people should listen, right? And that prophet, who's more than a prophet, and he's the God-man, <laughs> Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is going to happen the same way. We have to be ready for the third day because on the third day, according to Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, he's going to raise us up. And so what did God tell Moses about the third day? Exodus chapter 19, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, right? Today and tomorrow. Same thing as Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, right? Hosea chapter 6, verse 2. Right, the two days first, right? It's been 2,000 years since Jesus. Hallelujah. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus, today and tomorrow, right? But something's going to change on the third day. After two days will he revive us. Right. After two days, will he revive us? Hallelujah. We were born again. He, re he revived us. Hallelujah. During these 2,000 years, he revived us. Hallelujah. He quickened us with his spirit. Hallelujah. He gave us the comforter, which is the indweller. Hallelujah. The third person of the tri triune God. Hallelujah. Uh, the Holy Spirit who does not speak of himself. Hallelujah. He's revived us. He's quickened us. But in the third day, there's going to come a change. We're going to be translated. We're going to be raptured. We're going to be glorified in a body like unto Jesus when he raises us up. Exodus chapter 19. God says to, Lord, God says to Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. Have you washed your robes in the blood of the lamb? Hmm. Have you washed your robes in the blood of the lamb to make yourself ready? Right. This is the testimony. Right? This is the testimony of the great multitude, right? The testimony 
of the great multitude is that we've washed our robes in the blood of the lamb. Right? We've washed our clothes. Hallelujah. We've made ourselves ready. Hallelujah. Because it was Christ in us, the hope of glory, who made us ready by the washing of the word, the engrafted word, which is able to save our soul. Do you have a testimony on the day when he raises us up? Well, if you're in the father's house, you will. Right. If you're in the father's house at the time of the rapture, you're going to have a testimony. Right. Revelation chapter seven, verse nine. After these I beheld, after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Hallelujah. We got fruit with the palm trees. Jump down to verse thirteen. Hallelujah. Jump down to verse thirteen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Have you washed your robes? Have you washed your clothes? Hallelujah. And whence came they? It's the third day. Okay, it's the third day. We're in the Father's house. Mm. It's the third day. We're in the Father's house. Hallelujah. We, we have a testimony. Amen. Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, you know us. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, because we were never part of the great tribulation. Hallelujah. He brought us out so that he could bring us in. Where? To the Father's house. Okay. The people who go through the great tribulation are seen at the end, right? Who were beheaded, the tribulation saints. Right? They were beheaded for their witness for Jesus Christ. And the Bible says they were raised up at the second coming, which completes the first resurrection. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 20. Amen. God says that we come out of the great tribulation because we were never part of the great tribulation. He brought us out so that he could bring us in. And how were we brought in? At the time of the rapture, when the third day began. And how did, how did it all happen? We washed our robes, amen? We washed our robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, right? We washed our clothes in the blood of the Lamb. God says, sanctify them today and tomorrow. For the last two days, the last 2,000 years, we've been sanctified, right? It's a continual process that the Holy Spirit is doing through us, right? Going from glory to glory, right? Going from glory to glory like Paul, hallelujah. He said, I haven't arrived yet, but I'm aiming, right? I'm pressing on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay. He keeps on aiming. Amen. I'm keeping aim. Hallelujah. I'm looking unto the author and finisher of my faith, Jesus Christ, just like you are. You're looking unto the author and finisher of your faith. His name is Jesus Christ. You're aiming. Your eyes are stayed on him and he keeps you in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Your mind is being renewed day after day because you're studying to show yourselves approved amen you're washing in the word hallelujah the mind is being transformed by the word of god hallelujah and your clothes have been bought with a price which was the precious blood of jesus christ and he's washed them amen and let them wash their clothes our clothes have been washed by the blood of the lamb and what's going to happen on the third day verse 11 and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Hallelujah. And you shall set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that you go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. Hallelujah. And he said unto the people, be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. Are you ready for the third day, my friend? Are you ready for the third day? Because what's going to happen on the third day? Verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Hallelujah. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. Amen. God is going to appear. Right. God is going to appear on the third day. He's going to come down when he descends from heaven. Hallelujah. Riding upon a cloud, riding upon the wings of the wind. Right. Riding upon a cherub and he's going to fly. Right. He's going to cry out to the wheels, oh wheel, <laughs> the gal gal. Here comes the gal gal. Hallelujah. He's going to descend with a shout. 
right? With the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. They made themselves ready for the third day. And then those of us who are alive and remain are going to be caught up, harpazo, raptured, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord because we've made ourselves ready for the third day, right? Revelation chapter 7, right? We've washed our robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We are ready for the third day when we appear before the throne of God. That's not all. Amen. Where else do we see the third day? We see the third day in Genesis chapter 22. And then we're going to get to the New Testament. And then we're going to come back, circle back to Isaiah chapter 4. Because I want to show you this awesome detail about the third day, which blew my mind. I pray that it's going to, you know, uh, blow your mind as well, like it did me. Amen. The third day in Genesis chapter 22, right? Right. The third day in Genesis chapter 22, where again, we see the picture of the rapture, right? And the second coming, hallelujah, which is the offering of Isaac, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God tempted Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am, Hanani. And he said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and claved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up. And went unto the place of which God had told them. Verse 4. Then on the third day. There it goes. <laughs> what happened on the third day? Verse 4. Then on the third day. Hallelujah. Then on the third day. Abraham lifted up his eyes. And saw the place afar off. So on the third day. Abraham lifted up his eyes. What happens to those of us who are bearing fruit? Those of us who have the Holy Spirit. Right. Why do we call Jesus Lord, Lord, and we do not do the things that he tells us to do? He said, when these things begin to come to pass, look up for your redemption draws nigh. On the third day, everybody who's in Christ, we're looking up. This is exactly what we're doing now. We're looking up. We're waiting for him to appear. On the third day, the body of Christ, we're looking up. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. This is exactly what we see in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 33, right? Isaiah chapter 33. Hallelujah. I begin at verse 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Your eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. My goodness. All of us who are in Christ, right? all of us who are the first fruits, we're going to behold the land that is very far off. This is exactly what happened with Abraham, right? This is exactly what Abraham shadowed on the third day. Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. Right. And what happened? What happened? Right. He went up to the mountain. Hallelujah. He went up to the mountain. God said, gather unto me all those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And what happened? Abraham had a sacrifice. Hallelujah. But God provided the sacrifice. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus Christ says that we have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Amen. Abraham had a sacrifice, his own son. Right. And his own son was as good as dead. Right. And Abraham, hallelujah, was a living sacrifice. Amen. This is typifying. The dead in Christ rising first, Isaac. Abraham, who's alive and remain, all caught up on that day, the third day, when he lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. And what happens? There's going to be a substitute, right? There's a substitute. <laughs> Where's the substitute? On the mountain, right? This is the, what we see when we go through the open door in Revelation, right? Revelation chapter 5, we see the substitute, right? We see the substitute, the sinless Lamb of God. The lamb who had been slain, 
Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. There we are, the menorah. The restrainers removed, right? The seven spirits of God are right there. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit indwells the church. We're all there. And God has gathered unto himself everybody who has made a covenant with him by sacrifice. Hallelujah. We've presented our bodies as a living sacrifice and God provided the substitute. He's the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And there he is, the Lamb of God. We're in the place that we were looking up to. Hallelujah. We lifted up our eyes like Abraham. God told us to look up when these things begin to happen. And on the day when Jesus Christ comes like lightning from east to west, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 17 says, our eyes will see the king in his beauty. We are going to behold the land that is very far off. Hallelujah. Just like Abraham, he saw the land that is very far off. Right. Him and Isaac. Isaac was as good as dead, though. Right. He represents the dead in Christ rising first. Hallelujah. Abraham represents those of us who are alive and remain all caught up. Right. And there's a sacrifice. Hallelujah. There's a sacrifice that we have accepted. Right. The one who stood in our place that God provided in the mountain of the Lord. It shall be seen. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. Uh, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. Hallelujah. The sinless lamb of God. He's holy. Hallelujah. He's holy. Hallelujah. He's holy. Worthy is the lamb. Amen. Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. He's holy, harmless, undefiled. He's separate from sinners. On Mount Zion, the lamb of God will be seen. On Mount Zion, the one who we have made a covenant with by sacrifice is seen. Hallelujah. On Mount Zion, the land that is very far off. We will see the one who did it all when he takes the seven sealed scroll from the ancient of days. Hallelujah. When he takes the seven sealed scroll from the ancient of days, we are all there, all the first fruits. Amen. The table of showbread on the north side, table of showbread, here it goes. <laughs> 144,000 salvation is of the Jews. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, to the Greek. Right. And on the south side, hmm, hallelujah, on the south side is the menorah, the seven spirits of God. Amen. Right. On the south side is the menorah, the seven churches, the great multitude. We've all washed our robes in the blood of the lamb. Amen. And here we are before the king looking at him in all of his beauty. And guess what we're going to do as the first fruits? We're going to see the lamb that was slain. OK. Who was dead, but he is alive forevermore, the one who is and the one who was and the one who will always be, right? The one who is from everlasting to everlasting, the one who had no beginning and shall never have an end, the one whose days are without number, hallelujah. He is the ancient of days, okay? He's the ancient of days. <laughs> My goodness. He's the ancient of days, hallelujah. The Bible says in six days, God created the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. God says he is the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Before there were days, he's the ancient one. Ooh -wee. Before there was a day, he's the ancient one. Hallelujah. Before there was ever a day. Okay. When it was just him, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. When it was just him, ancient of days. Hallelujah. Even before there was a day. There he is, okay, all by himself. He needs nothing, okay? God says if he were hungry, he would not tell us, okay? He needs nothing. He answers to no one. He is the most high. Hallelujah. <laughs> he's self-sufficient. My goodness. But praise God that he's good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can I get a hallelujah someone? Okay. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Ain't that Psalm 107? I'm just feeling a little, a little, a little praise in my soul right now. But it's really a whole lot when I'm teaching. Amen. We, but we could praise now. Amen. We could praise them. Hallelujah. I don't know why people talk about how heaven 
is born, well, if you don't want to praise God, I can see why you say such things. Because we're going to praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. And gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. My goodness. What's going to happen on this day? What's going to happen on this day? Hallelujah. We see the whole picture right here in Psalm 107, right? All of us who are in the Father's house, we're going to sing the song of the redeemed, which is the new song, right? We're going to sing the song of the redeemed, which is the new song. Hallelujah. He's going to redeem us from the hand of the enemy. The dragon stands before the woman to devour the child as soon as we are born, but we are caught up, harpazoed, raptured, right? To God in the clouds. Right. To meet him in the air and uh, brought through the open door into his house. Hallelujah. He's going to gather us from the east and from the west because he comes like lightning from east to west. He's going to set up his tabernacle from the north to the south. Right. Because to the north is what? To the north, the table of showbread is put in 144,000 north side. Here it goes. Here goes the north. On the north side, table of showbread. From the north and from the south, and on the south, hallelujah, is the menorah. You can't make it up even if you tried. Only God could do this. Amen. Only God could do it. He's coming like lightning from east to west. Ooh -wee. Everybody get on board the glory train. Okay. Everybody get on board the glory train, third day express. Amen. Everybody get on the glory train, third day day express hallelujah if you heard the shout get on board dead in christ if you heard the voice of the archangel behold the bridegroom comes go ye out to meet him seal the hundred and forty four thousand table of showbread if you heard the trumpet of god all of us who are alive and remain get on board <laughs> Come up here, hallelujah. He coming like lightning from east to west. Third day express, you better get on board. Hallelujah. You got fruit? Amen. What's your entrance to the glory train? Third day express. What's your entrance? Have you washed your robes in the blood of the lamb? Have you been born again? Amen. Do you have a testimony? Amen. The question is, do you got a testimony? Hallelujah. <laughs> The Bible says we overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, right? We overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Have you washed your robes in the blood of the Lamb? And do you have a testimony? Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you got oil in your vessel? Ooh -wee. Do you got oil in your vessel? Okay. On the north side, table of showbread. On the south side. They say to the south side, south side. <laughs> they go to the menorah, hallelujah. All of us safe and sound inside the Father's house on the third day. He is going to raise us up, amen. See, I just want to do a little praise report because we still get into the meat, amen. We still get into the goodies, hallelujah. We get into the goodies right now, amen. And so here we see, again, Genesis chapter 22, a picture of the rapture. Because what happens after the rapture, right? What happens after the rapture? It's the second coming. This is exactly what Abraham declared to his servants, right? Exactly what Abraham declared to his servants, that after they went up, right, after they went up to the mountain, right, to the place far off, right, after they went up to the place far off on the third day, verse 5, Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. Right? We're coming back. Okay, we're coming back, but we got to go Fulfill our week. Amen. We got to go fulfill our week. We got a marriage to attend. And guess what? We are the bride. Amen. Here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Amen. But we're going to come back. And when we come back, we riding on white horses. Hallelujah. <laughs> when, we, when we come back, we coming on white horses. Ooh-wee. I can't wait. Amen. But that's not all about the third day. That's not all about the third day. I want to go to the New Testament now and talk about the third day, which is a segue into John chapter 2. Amen.
John chapter 2, right? <laughs> Speaking about weddings, hallelujah. Verse 1, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Hallelujah. The third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Hallelujah. So on the third day we have to attend a marriage, right? The third day there has to be a marriage. This was the first of Jesus' miracles, right? John chapter 2, when he turned the water into wine, right? On the third day, this was the beginning of miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, hallelujah, and his disciples believed on him. On the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. On the third day, there's going to be a marriage in the land far off. In the third day, there's going to be a marriage in the Father's house. In the third day, when Jesus Christ comes like lightning from east to west to get everybody who has been redeemed so that we can sing the song of the redeemed, which is the new song that only the 144,000 can learn, which is the opening of the seven sealed scroll by the Lamb of God, which the table of showbread, all the redeemed put on the north side of the Father's house. And the menorah, all the redeemed put on the south side of the Father's house can sing. We are the seven baskets full, the menorah, and the 12 baskets full, table of showbread. Hallelujah. We are the first fruits unto God. Amen. And the Bible says, because we are the first fruits unto God, amen, we have a new song. Revelation, right? Revelation chapter 5, amen, right when we see the lamb stand up, right, when we see our substitute. It should have been us on that cross, but God is love. And he said, in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord himself will provide a lamb, amen. The Lord himself has provided a substitute. The Lord himself has stood in the gap. The Lord himself has tasted death for every man. The Lord himself has bore our sins. The Lord himself has carried our sorrows. The Lord himself has been acquainted with our grief. The Lord himself was wounded for our transgressions. The Lord himself was pierced in his side. The Lord himself had a crown of thorns placed upon his head. The Lord himself was whipped on his back. The Lord himself had nails driven through his hands. The Lord himself had nails driven through his feet. The Lord himself cried out on the cross with his last breath, it is finished. The Lord himself said on the third day, we got to get this party started. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, he didn't say that, but he did say it. Hallelujah. <laughs> on the third day, my goodness. Okay. A lot of singing and dancing. Amen. A lot of singing, a lot of dancing. Amen. <laughs> we see that in the prodigal son. Hallelujah. In the prodigal son, we see the singing and the dancing. Okay, there's a party. Hallelujah. He said, look at it. Let's get this party started. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? When the younger son comes home first. Amen. Okay. Because the last has to be first. Right? And the first has to be last. So the younger son has to come home first. And when the younger son comes home first, God, the father, Puts on a party. He puts on a jam. Ooh, he puts on the jam of jams. He said, let's get this party started. It's the third day. Third day. There's a wedding. Hallelujah. We got to fulfill our week. Okay. A lot of singing. Ooh, a lot of dancing. Amen. And the Bible says we're going to have a new song to sing right when we go into his tabernacle with thanksgiving and praise. Verse 9, Revelation chapter 5. And they sung a new song saying, you are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For you are slain and has redeemed us. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. My goodness. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Why is it? Why is it? Family of God, I, I just, I'm just so excited. I, I don't know why, but I do know why. It's the joy of the Lord. You got the fruit of the Spirit? Amen. <laughs> Love, joy. The Bible says, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 14. What does God say about the 144,000? Those put on the north, right? The redeemed. Amen. When he comes like lightning from east to west and gathers his people from the north into the south. On the north, the Bible says to the table of showbread, the 144,000. 
they can learn the new song. Verse 3, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. As it were, a new song, right? Because we already know what the new song is in Revelation chapter 5. It's the same new song. There's only one new song, amen? And that new song is the song of the redeemed because we get to see the lamb take the book and open the seals thereof. For he was slain and he has redeemed us to God by his blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation. Well, that's the great multitude, right? Revelation chapter seven, we come from every kindred, every tongue, every people and every nation. And he has made us a kingdom of priests. God says, we are a peculiar people and we shall reign on the earth. This is the new song and only the 144,000 can learn it. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the 144,000, which were redeemed. There it goes. <clears throat> which were redeemed from the earth. Psalm 107, right? Psalm 107. Hallelujah. I mean, if you just let God be true and every man a liar, hallelujah. if you just let the Bible interpret the Bible, right? If, if, you, if, you, just, if you just let God speak, hallelujah. your servants, we listen. Amen. We, 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 we listen to what thus saith the Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Because we believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And it's the Holy Spirit that takes these things and makes them real unto us. So I pray that you would open up our eyes. You would open up our ears so that we can receive your word in our hearts, which are able to save our soul because we are being washed with the water of the word. Our minds are being renewed day after day because your word is truth. Sanctify us with your truth. Psalm 107 verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Got a new song? Amen. How about the great multitude? Amen. The great multitude in Revelation chapter 5. Hallelujah. From every tribe, every kindred, every nation, every tongue. The Bible says we were redeemed. Hallelujah. And we all sing the same new song. Hallelujah. We all sing the, name, the, the same uh, new song. Hallelujah. He has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. My goodness. Look at this. Just the details. Just the details. He repeats it twice. The redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Right? The redeemed, 144,000. The redeemed, the great multitude. Hallelujah. And then he talks about in verse 3 how it all happens on the cloudy and dark day on the third day. Hallelujah. And he gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west. The son of man comes like lightning from east to west. And he puts us into his house from the north and from the south. Hallelujah. Table of showbread on the north. <laughs> Menorah on the south. My goodness. I, I'm just I, I just rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. I just I just rejoice in the Lord. And I say God is good. Amen. Because we have a wedding to attend. Right. On the third day, there has to be a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And that happened. So on the third day, there has to be a marriage in heaven. God don't change. Amen. On the third day, has to be a marriage in heaven. Amen. On the third day, got to be a marriage in heaven. What saith you? <laughs> what saith you, child of God? On the third day, there has to be a marriage in heaven. On the third day, my goodness. God said, sanctify yourself. Mm. Sanctify yourself. Today and tomorrow, because on the third day, he coming down. Hallelujah. On the third day, sanctify yourself. Mm. Today and tomorrow. On the third day, he coming down. Sanctify yourself. Today and tomorrow. On the third day, he coming down. Last 2,000 years, we being sanctified. About time for the third day to happen. Amen. But that's not all. <laughs> that's not all. I got, I got one more New Testament example. Then I want to get to. Isaiah chapter 4 to show you this amazing thing about the third day. Hallelujah. I pray that you've been learning a little bit about the third day right now, though. But let me show you, show you this. The first time, <laughs> now look at this. The first time, help us, Holy Ghost. The first time that we come across the third day in the New Testament, look at this. Hallelujah. Look at this. This is, this is, this is, this is the whole shebang. Amen. 
I always say it's the whole shebang, but it's like, you know, wherever you go in the word, it's always the whole shebang because this is the word of God, right? Okay. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. And so what happens? Hallelujah. What happens? The first time that we see the third day take place in the New Testament, amen, is in Matthew chapter 16. Let me just show you this in the Esau so you can verify the facts. Hallelujah. I want you to verify the facts. Third day. We just we just talking facts, amen. We talking facts. Third day, New Testament. Okay, first time we come across the third day, this phrase, Matthew 16, verse 21. This is the first time that we come across the third day. Now look at this. Ooh wee. Matthew 16, verse 21. <laughs> this is what's going to happen on the third day, right? From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Verse 22, so the third day, right? We are his disciples and the disciple is not above the master. So uh, just as our Lord was raised up on the third day, we're going to be raised up on the third day because we're just like him. But what happened? What happened on the third day? Okay. When the first time the third day is mentioned in the New Testament, uh, look what happens in verse 22 and 23. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from you, Lord, this shall not be unto you. <laughs> look at this now, verse 23. You know what this says. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. My goodness. I mean, we could really park here for a long time, child of God. I, I, we could we could park here for a, for a long time and talk this and talk about this, but I'm not going to be too long, amen. I'm not going to be too long because I want to get to Isaiah chapter four. But this this is the whole this 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 is this is everything, right? This is exactly what happens on the third day, but it's just so much to this, right? Because it's the same way today, right? It's the same way today, just building up to the third day. You you, you got people. <laughs> People who are just like Peter, right? And they say, you know what? There ain't gonna be no rapture on no third day. Mm. They, 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 they say, they say, ooh, they, ooh, they say it, they say it too. You know, they say it, they say it. I can't believe it. They say it just like Peter, though, just like Peter. They say it just like Peter. There ain't gonna be no rapture on no third day. Mm. There ain't gonna be no rapture on no third day. Oh no, there ain't gonna be no raising up on no third day. Got these people out here, right? And this is what this is what this is what isn't this what Peter prophesied, right? There shall come mockers in the last days, right? Scoffing, right? Saying, "Where is the promise of His coming? Where that ain't no ain't no rapture on the third day? I told you. Where's the promise of His coming? Where that ain't no ain't no ain't no raising up on no third day? Where the rapture at? Where that? Okay." Same thing, same thing. <laughs> and so what's happening? Of course, they're being inspired by the dragon, right? The dragon is inciting all this, right? There's nothing new done under the sun. First time the third day is mentioned, here comes the dragon, right? First time in the New Testament that the third day is mentioned, here comes the dragon. My goodness. Is it, is it not in your Bible? Tell me, tell me, child of God. Child of God, tell me. Is it not in your Bible? Is it in the text? Tell me now. I'm telling you, child of God. I'm telling you. Child of God, child of God. The first time that the third day is mentioned, who shows up? I'm talking about the first time, child of God. Right. The first time. I don't know why Sade just popped into my mind. Sade is a singer. He said, she said that song, it's never as good as the first time. <laughs> I guess that's why. But I digress. <laughs> I really want to sing that song right now. But my singing voice, as you know, help me, Lord Jesus. On the third day, who shows up? Mm. The first time that the third day is mentioned in the New Testament. We in Matthew chapter 16, right? Who shows up? There you go. There you go. Okay, old dragon. There you go, third day. Mm. On the third day, third day, the dragon knows. Hey, 
The dragon knows, hey, it, it, I got to get to the salmon, right? On the third day, whenever the, whenever the dragon hears about the third day, he said, oh, time to try to catch me some salmon. Right? The dragon stands before the woman to devour the child as soon as we are born, right? This is, a fine, this is his final attempt, you know, to stop the third day, right? <laughs> this is his final attempt to stop the third day. Final attempt, right? Revelation chapter 12, he, he tries to stop the third day again. Right? But what's going to happen? The same thing. The Lord is going to rebuke him. Amen. The Lord is going to rebuke the enemy. Okay. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get under my feet. Get down there. Dragon. Okay. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Hallelujah. So the same thing is going to happen when the third day comes, <laughs> when God raises us up, the dragon is going to try to stop the third day from happening. Just like he appeared here, right? In Matthew chapter 16, the first time that the third day was ever mentioned in the New Testament, the dragon appeared. So type in shadow, we see the same thing happening in Revelation chapter 12. When the third day comes, when it's time to raise us up, dead in Christ rise first, those of us who are alive and remain all caught up. The dragon's right there to try to do something, but hallelujah, God says, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay, get under my feet now. Mm. Right? I can't wait, too. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay? God gonna tell Michael, hey, handle my light work. Right? God gonna tell Michael, man, handle this light work. Okay? <laughs> God gonna tell Michael, man, take care of this light work. Light work. Mm. Okay? Michael, Man, Michael, go take care of this light work. Light work. Okay. And Michael, he going to do his job. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? Michael going to do his job. Amen. And all two-thirds of the good angels. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said there's going to be war in heaven. Okay. Michael and his angels will fight against the dragon and his angels. Light work. Okay. Okay, what does light have to do with darkness? <laughs> light dispels all darkness, okay? Light work for all the good angels, amen? Them fallen angels, ooh, it's, it's a rout, okay? There's, there's not one straggler still standing around in heaven, no. All of them get down, okay? Hit the deck, okay? Everything that can be shaken, shake. The Bible says, yet once more, God has promised. This is what God said. On the third day, because we know we're talking about the third day, this is what's going to happen. God says he's promised, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Okay, everything shake that can't be shaken. Okay, all you fallen angels, get out. Okay, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't wait. Amen. And we have a praise on that day with the new song. Amen. We're going to enter into his tabernacle with thanksgiving and praise. The accuser of the brethren has been cast down. Him and all of his angels forever banished. Hallelujah. Okay. And they got seven years of mischief. Right. They got seven years of mischief. Don't want to see it. Right. They got seven years of mischief. Fourth beast kingdom. Oh, Woe worth the day for anybody left behind that has to see that. And then we come back riding on white horses and uh, the enemy gets put in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Shut him up. Put a seal over him. And God even says that that's just, you know, some angel. Not saying that it's just some angel. Every angel is more powerful than any human right now <laughs> until we get our glorified bodies. But the Bible doesn't even give a name for the angel that puts the dragon in the bottomless pit. He just says an angel takes the chain and, and chains up the dragon and throws him into the bottomless pit. Okay. <laughs> right? You know, light work. Right? Okay. Oh, dragon, light work. Any angel that God says deal with you, that angel going to deal with you. Oh, dragon. Right? And going to shut him up for a thousand years. And at the end of the thousand years, after the end of the seventh day, okay, the dragon going to be let out for a little season. Psh, my goodness. But praise God, we're going to be in our glorified bodies. And then here he, and then here he comes again. Okay, and we, we we were just getting comfortable too, right? I'm already picturing it, <laughs> right? A thousand years in the future, or well, I guess at least a thousand and seven plus years in the future. Mm. 
a thousand and seven plus years in the future from now, from 2023, a thousand and seven plus years from 2023. So around 3,023, 24, hopefully, <laughs> around uh, 3,031, uh, I should say then, right? Or 30, hallelujah. 3,030, 31, I should say, hallelujah. 3,000. 30, 31-ish, hopefully, amen. There you go again, my goodness. There you go. But praise God, we're going to be in our glorified bodies. And, and, and then here comes the troublemaker one more time. My goodness. Say, a leopard don't change his spots, and he's still up to his same old tricks, going out to deceive the nations that were born during the millennial reign of Christ. And he does a number once again. Right, because the Bible says he gathers an army as numerous as the sand of the seashore for all the people who were born during the millennial reign. A lot of them, at the first chance at rebellion, they fall the dragon. Can you believe it? But hey, that's what the Bible says. And then God puts an end of it, end of it once and for all. And then it's the crossroads. Amen. It's the crossroads. Hallelujah. Last day. See you at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. See you at the crossroads. Hallelujah. Last day. Mm. Last day. Woo-wee. Praise God. We're going to be on the right side of history, though. On the last day, well, mm. see you at the crossroads. <laughs> okay. Uh, I hope you ain't going to be lonely. Woo-wee. I hope you ain't going to be lonely on that day. Woo-wee. Right. But before we get, before I get too much carried away, as you can see, it's the Shabbat, and I'm feeling pretty happy. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling uh, pretty joyful, hallelujah, because God is so good. And let me just show you this last connection. Back to Isaiah chapter 4. Now, look at this. Look at this. Hallelujah. Okay, so let me go to my notes. I, I got my notes. <laughs> okay, look at this. Hallelujah. God is so good. So here we go. There's a Hebrew word that only occurs one time. In all of the Bible. And that Hebrew word that occurs one time is the Hebrew word mistor. Okay, mistor. Mem, Samik, Tab, Bab, Resh. And it means place of shelter. The numerical value of mistor is 706. Mem 40, Samik 60, Tab 400, Vav 6, Resh 200. 200 plus 6, 206 plus 400, 606 plus 60, uh, 666, plus 40, is 706. Hallelujah. The missed door. Hallelujah. Mm. The missed door. Hallelujah. The missed door is a place of shelter. Amen. And there's just so much to this, but I want to I hammer home the, the main point, and maybe I'll piggyback off a couple sub points, but... The main point is that this place of shelter in the Hebrew called the Mistor, it's only in one place in all the Bible, and it's in Isaiah chapter 4. The reason why this is significant is because the third day, Yom is day, Shiloshi is third, also has a numerical value of 706, right? Yom is uh, Yod 10, Vav 6. Mem 40, right? Yod 10, Vav 6, 16, plus Mem 40 is 56. And then you got uh, Sheleshi, which is third. That's Sheen 300, Lamed 30, 330, plus Yod 10, 340, plus Sheen is 640, plus Yod 650. So 650 plus 56, 706, hallelujah. So on the third day, there's going to be a mistor, hallelujah. <laughs> on the third day, there's going to be a place of shelter. That's the whole point, hallelujah. On the third day, Yom Shili Shi, the third day, there's going to be a place of safety, right? There's going to be a place of shelter, hallelujah. There's going to be a place of shelter from what? The 666, amen. The 666, I'm going I'm to show you that sub point, but before I get there, let me just show you, show you the places in Isaiah chapter 4, where we see it and, and break this down through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
So first, Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 13. Here it goes. Yom Shilishi, right? That is the third day. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, the third, Shilishi. Here it goes. Shin Lamid Yod, Shin Yod, Shilishi, Yom. Yod Vav Mem. Yom Shilishi, 706. So the third day is 706. In Isaiah chapter 4, we see that there is going to be a place of safety. Amen. And the place of safety, the uh, the Mistor right here, Strong's 4563, as you can see, it's only one place, one occurrence. It's in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6. Mm. Okay, because this is going to happen on the third day. There's going to be a place of protection. There's going to be a place of shelter. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6, we find it. And this all has to do with, of course, the rapture. But it talks about in the context of Isaiah 4, which goes hand in hand with the three chapters before it. Hallelujah. Because it talks about the build up to the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. When this all takes place. But what's interesting is that this mistor, hallelujah, it comes from the word sathar. Okay, it comes from the word sathar, which has its origins, hallelujah, sathar, which means to hide and to conceal. Samik tav resh. That's where the mistor comes from. And guess who appears, right? Guess who appears, right? Guess who, guess who appears when the place of shelter is given to all those who are found in Christ on the third day. Well, who appears is Sether, right? The 666, who is the hidden one. Remember the one with the evil report? Remember the one uh, with the evil report, hallelujah, that we find in <clears throat> the, the story of the 10 spies, hallelujah. The, the story of the, of the 10 spies, the one who was hidden, his name, was Sether, hallelujah, and we see Sether right here, okay, Sether has a numerical value of 666, Samik Tav Vav Resh, right, Samik Tav Vav Resh, hallelujah, Samik Tav Vav Resh is Sether, he appears one time in all the Bible, and he was one of the spies from the tribe of Asher in Numbers 13.13, 13. He was the hidden one who had an evil report, right? He had an evil report of the land when the children of Israel went to go spy out the promised land, right? And because of the evil report, right, the children of Israel were forced to wander in the wilderness for every day that they were in the promised land, which equaled a year. So for 40 years, they had to wander in the wilderness because the 10 who had the evil report Okay, troubled the camp of Israel with their evil report. And there was one hidden among the ten who had the evil report who has a gematria value of 666. His name is Sether. And Sether means hidden one, the hidden one. So at the time of the end, when the evil report is manifested, when the hidden one is manifested, hallelujah, when the hidden one is manifested, when the restrainer is removed, amen, at the time of the rapture, all of us who are removed at that time, we go to the place of safety, right? We go to the mistor. We go to the mistor. You add a mem and you got mistor instead of sether. Right? You put a mem right here. Hallelujah. And the mem is what? The mem is the waters, right? So there's, so there's going to be waters that are going to be separated above, right? There's going to be waters that are going to be separated above because mem is waters. Hallelujah. And the waters that are separated above are going to find a place of shelter, right? Second day of creation. God separated the waters above from the waters below. While the waters below, right, the waters who are left below, they're going to see the hidden one that has been now revealed, which is uh, Sether, right? Sether means to hide, uh, to conceal, right? Here goes Sether, and Sether means hidden one. Right, it comes from the same root word Cathar. Right, the same root word that Mistor comes from. Hallelujah. Now let me show it to you in Isaiah chapter four, and then we'll be done. Isaiah chapter four. A remnant in Zion, verse one. 
And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name and take away our reproach. So you have to put Isaiah chapter 3 and Isaiah chapter 2 into the context of Isaiah chapter 4, because that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the day of the Lord. So like if you go back to Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 2, you'll see this is the day that God stands up. And Isaiah chapter 3 talks about all the destruction, right? Isaiah chapter 2 talks about when God stands up. Hallelujah. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Hallelujah. This is the day when God stands up. Amen. And then it talks about it in Isaiah chapter 3, about the conditions that are going to be on the earth for everybody who was left behind when uh, God stands up. Amen. And you can read that on your own accord. But I want to talk about Isaiah chapter 4 because it continues with these people who are left behind. Seven women are taking hold of one man. And this is multifaceted, but just in the context of what we're talking about, there's going to be so few men left that there's more women than men, and they're trying to get just one man, hallelujah, to take care of them in the immediate context of what we're talking about. Hallelujah. And so what happens? Verse 2. In that day, talking about the same day, the day of the Lord. Now you have to break down the different facets of it. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. So who's the branch of the Lord? Right? The branch of the Lord is, of course, Jesus. We know that the branch of the Lord is Jesus because we see it in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Right? The days are coming declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. Hallelujah. So this branch, hallelujah, verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 4, in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. That branch of the Lord is talking about Jesus Christ. We saw that in Jeremiah 23 verse 5 about this branch, the righteous branch. We also see it in Jeremiah 33 verse 15. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 33, verse 15, we see the same thing. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Again, speaking about Jesus, he's the branch. He's the Samach, right? That's the Hebrew word for the branch. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Branch, Samach. Hallelujah. Samach. Hallelujah it means a sprout, a growth. Right? He's the samach, he's the sprout, he's the growth. Right? He's the branch. Right? He's the root out of the dry ground. Isaiah 53, verse 2. Right? He's the sprout, <laughs> literal or figurative, a branch, a bud, that which grew. Okay? So he is the root out of the dry ground. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. He's the branch. He's the righteous branch. Zechariah tells us the same thing in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8. Listen, high priest Joshua, you and your associates seated before you, who are men symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant, the branch. Again, the same Hebrew word, samach. Hallelujah. Same Hebrew word, <clears throat> my servant, the branch. Again, samach. Hallelujah. Samach. It's the same word that you see in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2, the branch. Okay, so we're talking about Jesus Christ. So in the same day, speaking in the context of the day of the Lord, what's going to happen? And that day shall be the branch of the Lord. And that day shall be, and that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. Right? So Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he's divine in the New Testament. And the Bible says we are the branches. So we're connected to him. Hallelujah. We're connected to this branch. Right? If we're going to bear fruit. And that's exactly, exactly what he goes on to say. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. So there's going to be an escape, right? There's going to be a, an escape for those who bore fruit on the earth, right? Going back to Genesis chapter 1 on the third day. First time we come across trees. First time we come across fruit. And God says it was good. Hallelujah. So at the same time when the day of the Lord begins... Okay, the branch is going to appear. Hallelujah. 
uh, the branch of the Lord is going to be beautiful and glorious. And those who are in him who bear fruit, uh, those who are of the earth, hallelujah, all of us who are of the earth, hallelujah, we're going to be brought into the heavenly, right? Uh, we're going to be found in the last Adam, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and we're going to escape, right? Because remember, hallelujah, we, the body of Christ, we've been grafted in. We've been grafted into the vine, hallelujah. Right? We've been grafted into the vine of Israel, into the line of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. So we're going to escape at this time. And he's going to continue to prove this in verse 3 through 6. And it shall come to pass now, so this verse 2 talk, is talking about the rapture, all of us who are going to escape that have been grafted into Israel, who bear, who bear fruit when the branch of the Lord appears, and he's going to be beautiful and glorious, hallelujah. All the trees that bear fruit, the palm trees specifically, we're going to escape. Hallelujah. And verse 3 talks about the second coming. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Okay, so now he's hinting at the second coming. Right, Everybody who's left at the second coming who passed through what? the fire of judgment. This is what we see in verse four. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Okay, so that's the dark and cloudy day. That's the judgment heated seven times hot, the fiery furnace, right? Where God has to bring uh, the remnant through it in order for them to be washed because they didn't want to be caught up at the time when God was looking for the fruit of the trees, right? He was looking for uh, the fruit on the tree on the third day. So now these people who didn't have no fruit on the third day, well, now they have to be left behind. They didn't want to wash their robes in the blood of the lamb, right? To be part of the number when the saints go marching in for the wedding on the third day. So now they have to go through this fire, okay? They have to go through this time of burning, through this time of judgment, right? And God has to purge out all the rebels, right? And he's going to bring all those through the fire who are appointed to inherit glory, right? The remnant, hallelujah. And God says, everyone that's left, hallelujah, they're going to be holy. Okay, so this is speaking about the second coming. Now he's going to switch back again to the kingdom, but also he's speaking about what's going to happen at the rapture. Look at the details. Verse 5, and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion. Okay, so now he's speaking about Mount Zion. So who are the first people to go into Mount Zion? Right, the first fruits. Hallelujah. The first fruits are the first to go to Mount Zion. Right. This is Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Right. That's the table of showbread. We also see. In Revelation uh, uh, chapter 5, okay, when the Lamb is standing, that the great multitude is there. And we're all singing the new song when he takes the seven sealed scroll from the Ancient of Days. Verse 6, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne, and the throne is in Mount Zion. And of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a Lamb. Same scene, just a different perspective. As it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth in all, all the earth. We're there too, the body of Christ. We're all there. We're the first fruits. Hallelujah. And so what, what is God saying in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5? And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion. God says in his father's house there are many mansions. Right? He goes to prepare a place for us. And if he goes to prepare a place for us, he will come again and receive us to himself so that where he is, we will be also. And upon her assemblies. Right. All of us have come to Mount Zion. Hallelujah. In festal, uh, in festal attire. Hallelujah. All the assemblies, table of showbread and the great multitude. God is creating upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies. A what? There goes the cloud, a cloud and a smoke by day. Hallelujah. A cloud and a smoke by day. The house fills with smoke when we go in. Right. Because the clouds of heaven have entered into it, right? Because Daniel chapter 7 tells us that the Son of Man comes before the Ancient of Days in the clouds of heaven. 
And when he comes before the Ancient of Days in the clouds of heaven, he takes the seven seal scroll and opens it. And all the first fruits, table of showbread and the menorah, we sing a new song, right? And the Bible tells us that the angel who stands at the golden altar of incense offers up the incense of all the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar. And the smoke begins to ascend up before the face of God, Revelation chapter 8. Then he takes the fire from the altar, same thing you see in Ezekiel chapter 10, and he goes out and he casts it upon the earth, right? Hailstones and coals of fire. And the Bible says that the cloud, the smoke, all fill Mount Zion, right? The tabernacle, amen, in heaven. Same thing we're seeing right here in verse 5. Okay, verse 5. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. Hallelujah. So again, not only is he speaking about the heavenly Mount Zion, but he's also speaking about the kingdom, right? The kingdom age, amen, what is still going to be night because he's talking about the protection that he's going to give to everybody. But it begins in heaven first, right? And this is where we're going to see the mist door. For upon all the glory shall be a defense, okay? Upon all the glory shall be a defense. This is exactly what's going to happen for those of us who are raised up on the third day. We get to see God's glory. And so God says, upon all the glory shall be a defense. Our Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and we are safe. So he's speaking about Mount Zion in heaven first and foremost, but he's also talking about the whole entire kingdom age where God is going to protect everybody who will be in there. Even this remnant that went through the fires of the time of Jacob's trouble, right? When the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning purged out all the rebels. Hallelujah. Verse six, here goes the mistor. And there shall be a tabernacle. Hallelujah. Here goes the tabernacle. There shall be a tabernacle. Amen. All of us who are the first fruits, we're inside the tabernacle. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow. Right? Psalm 91. Those of us who dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, right? We're protected, right? We're protected on this day. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge and for a covert from the storm and from the rain. The covert, the King James Version, is the Hebrew word mistor. Amen. The covert is the place of shelter. That's the mistor from the storm and from the rain. Well, the Bible tells us that the storm and the rain comes on the day when Jesus Christ brings the cloud over the earth. Right. Here goes the mistor. Right. The shelter. King James translated as covert. Hallelujah. The mistor. Here it goes. One time in all the scriptures. Right. The waters, mem, you had a mem, hallelujah, to the beginning of it. And that mem is all the waters that escaped, okay? We escaped the time of trial. We escaped Sether, the hidden one who's going to be revealed when the restrainer is removed. All the waters are going to be separated on the cloudy and dark day. Some of the waters are going to go above in heaven. All of us who have the fountain of living waters. Well, everybody who doesn't have the fountain of living waters is left below, right? In the waters below, and then who appears? You take away the mem, you take away this mem, and you get sether. Samic, tav, vav, res, samic, 60. Tav, 400, 460. Uh, vav, 6, 466. Resh, 200, 666. Hallelujah. So for... The people who don't have a place of shelter, right? The people who don't have a place of shelter, those who have been left behind, who built their foundation upon the sand. John the Revelator said that he stood upon the sand of the sea to give the perspective for those who are left behind. And he said he saw a beast rise up out the sea. So now, for the waters left below, the beast rises up out of them. Right? The beast rises up out of the waters left below because the restrainer has been removed, the waters above have been taken away to the place of shelter, and now the hidden one is revealed. Sether, 666, he has an evil report. Hallelujah. But for those of us, hallelujah, who are taken to the Father's house, amen, for those of us who are taken to the place of safety, to the mist door, hallelujah, God says that we will have 
a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat. Right. This is this is this is the promise for the great multitude. Right. The great multitude in Revelation chapter seven. OK, the heat is not going to shine upon them. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter seven. All of us who have washed our robes in the blood of the lamb and made them white because we were ready for the third day. The Bible says, hallelujah, <laughs> the Bible says that in verse 16 of Revelation chapter 7, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore, neither shall the sunlight on them, nor any heat. Amen. Right? For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. Right? The waters above who have the fountain of living waters living in them. We are separated and brought into the place of safety, the mistor, and the heat doesn't get to us. That spirit of burning isn't coming to us because we made our foundation the rock on the day of the storm. On the day of the storm, hallelujah, God has a hiding place, a mistor. On the day of the storm, God has a hiding place from the rain, the hailstones and coals of fire, right? On the day when Jesus Christ descends, when he stands and when he passes by, all of us who are ready on the third day, we have a hiding place, the mistor, which is the tabernacle of the Most High. Right? 706. 706, right? Yom Shili Shi. Right? Yom Shili Shi, 706. Mistor, 706. You add the mem, right? You add this mem right here. In the mem, the waters above, we're, prote we're protected in the place of shelter, the mistor, from the 666. Because if you take away this mem, if you take away the mem, okay, and you're the waters below, well, who appears? Okay, the hidden one, Sether, Samic. Tav, Bob, Resh, Sether, the hidden one. He has an evil report. 666, right? <laughs> I pray that you got it. Hallelujah. I pray that you got it. I pray that you got it, that you saw the mistor, okay, the place of safety, how it's connected to the third day. And I pray that God blessed you on this Shabbat with a good meal for you to digest and to think about and to meditate and to let God continue to reveal truth to you. I pray that you're blessed. Please keep me in your prayers, family of God. I pray that I don't overspeak. And I pray that, you know, God, you know, he, he's ministering to you through this earthen vessel of clay. I pray that you're blessed, family of God. And I pray that you're learning just as I'm learning because I keep on being blown away because God is just so amazing. Until we talk again, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Maranatha, amen. I love you. Many, many Tekel Eupharsin was the handwriting on the wall that appeared at Belteshazzar's drunken feast in ancient Babylon that weighed and numbered and found the kingdom of Babylon wanting in God's judgment scales. And that very night, Babylon was overtaken by the Medes and Persians. Well, our God doesn't change. Now, at the time of the end, he has put his handwriting in the sky. For at the time of the end, there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And so what you're looking at is the path of totality for three solar eclipses. The first one happened August 21st, 2017, the Great American Solar Eclipse. The next one that will take place is an annular solar eclipse that will go from California to Texas on October the 14th, 2023. And then the final Great American Solar Eclipse Part 2 will take place on April 8th, 2024. That will form an olive over America. And at the same time, it will produce the Tav over America. The olive and the Tav is the name of God. Jesus Christ declares that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Here we have a heavenly sign that only God can make with the solar eclipses that will reach its fullness on April 8th, 2024. The next solar eclipse after 
April 8th, 2024, which completes the olive and the top over America. The next solar eclipse to happen over America will not happen until 2045. What is God trying to tell us? The time is short. Therefore, look up for our redemption draws nigh. The rapture is soon. Will you be found in Jesus or will you be left behind? The choice is yours. Live forever and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise King Jesus. I'm thankful that the Lord led your feet here to sit down at the table and whet your appetite. May you come back next week if the Lord says the same. For more teachings of when the temple in heaven is open, everything will change. If you want further study, come to my YouTube page as you can see on the screen. And if you want to support the ministry, please go to PreachTheLoveOfGod.com to get all your merchandise to be a witness through fashion for the soon coming King, Jesus Christ. Rapture soon. Amen.